Hi guys, this is Nick Reynolds and I'm interviewing my mom here, Elizabeth, on the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. Um, first question is, what connection did you have to the world's AIDS epidemic that began in the mid-1980s? Um, primarily, it was a personal experience. I had some friends who suffered the terrible disease and uh, I worked at Bristol Myers Squibb, which is a pharmaceutical company that developed the second and third drugs that were used in the treatment of AIDS. I worked with physicians and uh, patients and uh, the FDA to discuss side effects and the treatments available for the people. Okay. When did you first remember hearing about the illness and what was your reaction? I remember exactly where I was standing actually on my college campus in about 1983 and uh, we actually were talking first about um, the reason that now you have little twist off caps that are hard to get off medications. There was a period of time where people were putting poisons in aspirin bottles and they started um, making the tamper resistant bottles and we were talking about that and what led to a discussion of what at that time was called gay cancer that affected a small population of gay men in larger cities in America like New York and Los Angeles and Philadelphia and that was the first time I remember hearing about it. It was, wasn't something that I was too concerned about because it affected such a population that was so small. It was kind of, um, kind of grew to where as we were hearing more and more about it, it was kind of like recently it reminded me of the, the bird flu that we heard about uh, in the last couple of years and it began to get a little bit more disconcerting. When did most people become familiar with AIDS and HIV? I think in general in America it became a topic of conversation about the mid-1980s. Um, there was a Hollywood legend, a leading man by the name of Rock Hudson who succumbed to the disease and I think it became a little bit more personal there. People were starting to hear about the, the virus and the spread of the virus and um, the means by which it was spread. And um, people were beginning to know people within their own small communities that had the disease. Um, who was most directly affected by the epidemic? Uh, I remember when I was working at Bristol Myers, there were, there were people who called it the four H's. And um, the people at that time that were most directly affected were 4-H's, the Haitians, people from the island of Haiti, uh, hemophiliacs, or people with a bleeding disorder that got the drug through, or got the uh, virus through blood transfusions, um, homosexuals, and heroin users, or intravenous drug users, largely were um, most of the people affected at that time, and that has, of course, since changed. Okay, um, who are some of the key figures connected to the AIDS epidemic? Um, some people that come to mind immediately. Uh, one of them was uh, Dr. Gallo, and there was a French, French physician that worked with the Pasteur Institute that um, kind of early on into the epidemic, they uh, discovered the virus, HIV virus, that led to uh, AIDS. Um, there, I think of a, San, I mean, a Los Angeles doctor, um, Weissman, who noticed that the epidemic was affecting a certain population of gay men and helped in that way to um, learn a lot more about the disease. And of course I think any time that celebrity names are added to the disease that people become more aware of it. There was uh, Arthur Ashe, a famous tennis player who had the disease, Magic Johnson, um, some celebrities that linked their names to the cause were Elizabeth Taylor, Michael Jackson, Elton John. Um, it became a political disease as well and there was a gentleman by the name of Randy Schultz that wrote a book that was called And the Band, and the Band Played On and it named um, the president at the time, Ronald Reagan, and uh, talked about how if politicians had taken the disease more seriously early on that we probably wouldn't have the number of people um, 
that we do today, 35 million worldwide that are infected with the disease. Um, there's also Cleve Jones who started the NAMES project. Uh, if you've heard of the AIDS quilt, he began that. Um, at one time, uh, the arts community, and, and still they are, were very concerned by the number of people that they lost to AIDS and they were concerned about the future of the arts because um, Keith Haring, a famous artist, was lost to AIDS. Many of the people on Broadway and um, that type of thing were lost to AIDS. So those were some important things. Okay, you kind of answered my next question there about how has the world changed as a result of the HIV virus? Well, numerous ways. What comes to mind immediately is um, I think of a young boy from Indiana, a teenager by the name of Ryan White, who contracted the AIDS virus um, because he was a hemophiliac. And I think that um, just our views of the disease have changed dramatically. At one time, he was not allowed to go to school because um, people were concerned about his disease and how it was spread and who could become infected. There was a time where um, people with HIV virus were not allowed in public swimming pools. Um, just recently, uh, President Obama, a couple of years ago, lifted the ban on travel for people with HIV into the United States. But um, also in many ways, such as uh, just the way that needles and blood interactions in medical professions are handled. Um, the way the FDA operates clinical trials, uh, civil rights for people who are ill have um, been looked at, and um, personally what affects me most is uh, uh, 25 million AIDS orphans that are left for the world to take care of. Okay, um, final question is, what is the future of the HIV epidemic? Well, um, kind of, I think with a lot of epidemics, it has its ups and downs, and there was a time where there were, because of education, there were um, fewer people being infected. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of ebb and flowed in the negative way, and now the infections, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, are at the epidemic level. There are some villages that are 50 to 65 percent of the population is infected. Um, there are areas in Asia and Eastern Europe that are, the infections are on the rise again. Um, but I think that the changes that I've seen is um, when I first started working in the field that the time from diagnosis to death was typically about 16 months and now the disease is treated more as a long-term illness like uh, diabetes and it's something that people can live with. Okay, well that's it. Thanks, Elizabeth. Quite welcome. For uh, answering my questions there. Okay. Okay.